I'm Marty Stauffer. What bird has ears in front of its eyes and an upside down brain? Which is classified as a shore bird, even though it inhabits upland meadows and woods? And what bird has dozens of names, such as bog sucker, mud bat, and timber doodle? It's all the same bird. And it's also the world's slowest flyer, the American woodcock. This beautifully strange creature, with its unique courtship flights, still has scientists puzzled by its migratory behavior. Though widely distributed, woodcocks are especially drawn to certain areas along the scenic coast of Maine. Let's travel to the eastern tip of North America to meet some unforgettable eccentrics, timber doodles of moosehorn. The state of Maine is not only a geographical location, but a way of life. It's a way of life that harmonizes well with nature. Along the coast, rustic fishing villages blend with scenic natural harbors. Traditional lifestyles continue to depend upon the natural bounty of the sea. Natural beauty has also been preserved in Maine, in such places as Acadia National Park. The only national park in the Northeast, Acadia's 39,000 acres are centered around Mount Cadillac, the highest point on the eastern seaboard. Many types of native wildlife thrive in Acadia. Canada geese breed here, and beaver are often seen going about their business. Also found here is the largest member of the deer family. Moose were once common in Maine, but almost disappeared due to human pressures. Now they're making a comeback. A bull moose may weigh over a thousand pounds and even a cow can stand six feet high at the shoulder. Graceful, despite its ungainly appearance, the moose is a living symbol of Maine's wilderness. The most northeastern of all states, the pine tree state, is also one of the wildest. It contains the most northeastern national park, Acadia, and the most northeastern national wildlife refuge, Moosehorn. Actually, moose don't have horns. They grow antlers, 
and Moosehorn has only a very small moose population. More commonly found here are several fascinating birds. One is the ruffed grouse. Another is the primary reason for the establishment of Moosehorn as a refuge, the American Woodcock. It's known by nicknames as quaint as its appearance. Of these, Timberdoodle is the most common. A round body, stubby tail, and short legs make the bird seem almost clownish. But its comical features serve a purpose. Large eyes, set high on its head, enable the woodcock to see in a complete circle without moving. In most bird species, the ears are behind the eyes. The ears of the woodcock are below and slightly in front of its large eyes. Because its eyes and ears have taken up so much room, the timber doodle has evolved a unique brain. It's in a backward and upside down position. The woodcock is the world's slowest flyer. Cruising at five miles an hour makes it possible to zigzag through the thickest brush. But the timber doodle spends most of its time on the ground, which is where it finds its food. Damp thickets with rich leafy soil are the preferred habitat. Ideal conditions for earthworms, the main item in the woodcock's diet. After a spring rain, a bird may be lucky enough to find two earthworms bonded together in the act of mating. In this case, the meal will be a double bonus. Its slender bill is almost three inches long. The tip of the upper bill is flexible and has sensitive nerve endings which enable the woodcock to literally feel around for its prey. On a good day, the woodcock will eat its own weight in worms. Since it spends so much time probing, another of its nicknames is mudsucker. During their early spring courtship season, timber doodles are most active at dawn and dusk and on nights with a full moon. Among the creatures that prey upon them are other birds, such as this great horned owl. But the timber doodle is not an easy target. It may be the world's slowest flying bird, but it can also be very fast. When the ground has thawed, woodcocks migrate north, and the male begins one of the most fascinating courtship displays of any bird. Claiming a spot called a singing ground, it makes an insect-like sound called a peent before suddenly bursting into the air. Flying up two or three hundred feet, it then spirals down like a falling leaf, making a series of liquid chirps.
to attract the attention of females below. This flight is repeated many times each day at dawn and dusk. Sometimes two males perform rival flights over the same territory, calling out harshly at one another. This twittering sound had observers puzzled for many years until it was discovered to be the wind whistling through their primary feathers. Cox's effort will usually be rewarded by a receptive hen. Since timber doodles are polygamous, a male may attract and mate with several females during the course of the display period. As spring turns to summer, the timber doodle hen lays four speckled eggs in a shallow nest. She alone will incubate the eggs for the 21 days it takes them to hatch. When she leaves the nest to feed, the eggs are as well hidden by their coloration as she is by hers. Yet there's always the chance that while she's gone, some of them might fall prey to snakes, rodents, or other birds. The hen returns to continue incubation. By being away for only short periods of time, she's able to keep the eggs at a uniform temperature. The omnivorous black bear can also be a threat. The young are especially vulnerable when they're in the process of hatching. The hen flies up in an attempt to distract the bears. Risking her own life, she lands close by and flutters about as if helpless. This attracts the attention of the bears toward her and away from her helpless young. The hen returns to the nest to find one chick almost dry and hiding in the grass a few inches away. The hen usually lays one egg a day for four days. Still, they will all hatch at nearly the same time, 
and be able to leave the nest together. In some species, the babies hatch naked and helpless. But timberdoodle chicks, like most game birds, are precocious, hatching out fully feathered, wide-eyed, and ready to explore their new world. Nevertheless, instinct tells this chick to stay close to its mother. Surprisingly, the clearing of land can actually have a beneficial effect on woodcock populations. At Moosehorn, habitat for woodcock is maintained by cutting trees when they grow too old or too tall. Though the woodcock is classified as a shorebird, it prefers an upland combination of thin woods and open meadows. As the only national wildlife refuge devoted primarily to the woodcock, Moosehorn supports many research programs. Dogs are often used to hunt woodcock. Biologists also find them invaluable. This English setter freezes and points at the bird's location. The dog locates a woodcock by sense of smell. A man might almost step on one and never even know it was there. The timber doodle is practically invisible in its amazing camouflage coloration. Thanks to the dog, the bird can be netted. This hen with chicks will be very useful to their studies. The bird is picked up carefully and then inspected to determine its health. Measurements are taken which, when added to other statistics, will give a clear picture of how moosehorn timber doodles are faring in comparison with other populations. The female timber doodle is given a numbered leg band. It will identify her anywhere along her migration route. While one biologist keeps the hen calm, the other unwraps a new radio transmitting device designed especially for woodcock. The tiny, lightweight transmitter is fastened around the bird's body. The device will enable biologists to keep track of the hen without interfering with their activities. The signal emitted by the transmitter is inaudible to the bird. The chicks that were hidden beneath the female are also carefully removed. They too are given leg bands that will identify them for life. They can live as long as eight years, but most never make it past the age of two.
Except for a few ruffled feathers, the hen looks none the worse for her experience. And the chicks also seem not to notice their tiny burden. Despite the interruption, the woodcock family is soon back to normal. The chicks are rapidly developing primary wing feathers and will fly within two weeks after hatching. Like the adult, the young instinctively know how to probe for worms. But the mother's care and protection is needed for at least the first month. There are several reports of a hen carrying her chicks one at a time to safety by flying with them held between her legs. Her dangling legs and drooping tail might look that way, but there's little evidence to support these sightings. Within about 50 days of hatching, each member of the brood will go its separate way. But for now, staying together is important. As summer comes to an end, the researchers locate the timber doodles at night as they roost in open blueberry fields. Using a mobile radio receiver, researchers are able to track signals transmitted from birds captured earlier in the year. Blinded by the light, this timber doodle seems confused about which way to turn. Once again, the net falls. The young bird is identified by its band number. Its sex, in this case a female, is determined by the shape of its primary flight feathers. After the bird is studied and admired, it's set free once again. The information which is gathered will be used to improve the future of woodcock populations, both in Maine and elsewhere. The autumn sun rises over a land chilled by morning mist. But if the days are crisp, so are the bright colors of early fall. The trees change color before the lakes and ponds have frozen. And before the earth freezes and their sharp bills can no longer probe the hardened ground, the woodcock population of Moosehorn prepares to fly south. The wild geese are already streaming southward. And a young timber doodle, solitary now that its siblings have gone separate ways, will soon be drawn to migrate with others of its kind. After wintering and the warmth of the south, it will return in spring to the woods and fields of Moosehorn 
to begin performing its own aerial courtship display. But its long journey is full of risks. The woodcock is a favorite game bird for thousands of hunters. Okay, come on, come on, you. It presents an elusive challenge to man and dog alike as it holds still right up to the last second. There's a point. Not all woodcock will survive the migration south, but controlled hunting by humans is a minor limiting factor. The important thing is the preservation of their habitat. The timber doodle seems a whimsical bird and has been accused of being designed by a committee. But its very oddity makes it unique, a remarkable contribution to nature's essential diversity. As with all forms of wildlife, the woodcock's welfare is important to our own. Often, the more unusual a creature is, the more we enjoy it. The much-studied American woodcock has many admirers who love it above all other birds. What intrigues me is that animal oddities, as different as they sometimes are, create balance in the environment. Let's cherish the uniqueness in all wildlife, such as the fascinating timber doodles of moosehorn. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, Enjoy our wild America.